Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is Japanese Wagyu beef. All right? Now, you can also take my 104 lesson cooking course called Learning to Cook Like a Pro One Small Plate at a Time. It starts off easy, it gets progressively harder, and it ends with the ultimate challenge. You can also watch my special series like Italian Faves, Impress Your Date, Sauces to Die For, Spain on a Small Plate, French Faves, or Bonus Lessons, which are things like how to break down a chicken. But today we're going to talk about Wagyu. Wagyu. What is Wagyu? Wagyu, first of all, I'm saying it very intentionally. Wagyu. Uh, wa in Japanese means, some, some people say it means Japan or Japanese. Other people say it means harmony or peace, right? And Gyu, G-Y-U, that means beef or cow or cattle. So you put them together, if wa does mean Japanese, it means Japanese cattle. Uh, if it, but it also may be one of those words that has kind of a more complex meaning, not a direct translation. So wagyu could mean like, you know, like mm, not harmonious cattle, but kind of like perfect cattle. Uh, the type of wagyu cattle that is prized for culinary purposes is called Japanese black. There are four, uh, basically four breeds of wagyu and uh, the one that is used for culinary purposes uh, is Japanese black. There's also Japanese brown, a short horn, and polled. All right, now, big question is, is Wagyu Kobe? The answer is no, Wagyu is not Kobe. Wagyu means Japanese beef, as we just uh, were discussing. Kobe is a city. Kobe is a city in Hyogo Prefecture. Prefectures are kind of like states or counties. We don't have exactly the same thing uh, in the United States, but they're, uh, they're kind of like states or counties. And some Kobe, I'm, I'm sorry, some Wagyu, some Wagyu, but you know, a fairly small amount, comes from Kobe and Hyogo Prefecture. But there is also uh, Wagyu that comes from many other places in Japan. We're gonna talk about that. Now here's a chart. This chart was prepared by a company that sells uh, Wagyu beef uh, called uh, Wagyu Man, and they're uh, at wagyuman.com. And I've bought uh, I've bought uh, Japanese beef from them. Excellent. And uh, so I recommend that you go to their website. Uh, but as you can see from this map, um, Wagyu beef comes from many different parts of Japan. You can see Kobe there. With a little cow face uh, but you can also see Miyazawa that's a great beef I've had in Japan you can see Matsutaka that's a great beef I've had in Japan you can see Miyazaki uh, and I know Japanese people who prefer the Matsutaka and the Miyazaki and the Miyazawa beef over Kobe Wagyu beef here's another uh, well let's look back to that first uh, chart again you can see in the upper uh, part of that map, the very top of that map, that is Hokkaido, the northernmost part of Japan. It's an island, okay? And on this next map, here's a map just of the Wagyu that comes from Hokkaido. All over the island, there is different types of, uh, not different types, but um, Wagyu cattle that is um, grown and raised all over the, the uh, Hokkaido island. Now, the production of Wagyu beef is very tightly controlled. All of it is raised to local specifications. All of it is 100% full-blooded, okay? And it's graded according to yield and by marbling. Now, if you are familiar with um, Wagyu beef that's sold here in the United States, uh, then you have probably heard the term A5. A5 is considered to be the best Wagyu beef available in the United States. And, and according to the rating system that I'll show you, it's considered to be the best. The A stands for yield, all right? So if you have the, an A rating, you're getting excellent yield. And five stands for marbling. The more marbling you have, the higher the number you're gonna have. And five is considered to be the highest number. I'll show you a little bit later in this video the um, Mishima beef that I'm gonna be uh, cooking tonight and I'll show you the marbling of that. 
But uh, if you go on the internet, you can see photos of uh, Wagyu beef that is far more marbled than uh, the beef that I'm going to show you later. And I'll have something to say about that. Now, here is a beef grading scale. This was prepared by uh, the company called Lone Mountain Cattle, which sells full-blooded Wagyu grown in the United States. Uh, great company. Recommend you go to their website as well. And they created this um, great chart that kind of compares uh, the grading of Wagyu to uh, the grading of uh, beef in the uh, USA. And the Japanese actually used two different uh, scoring systems. The overall uh, score of A, if it's below A3, it's not really the, um, the high quality Wagyu beef. So A3, 4, and 5 are the, high, uh, the, high, uh, the best beef. They also have the BMS scale. And the BMS scale, as you can see, is more, uh, has more gradations in it than the A scale. And uh, if you see in the, where it says A5, you can see that is BMS 8 through 12. And I'll have something to say about that a little bit later on also. And you can see uh, that A4 and 5, A3, 4, and 5 means very abundant marbling. And it is beyond U.S. prime. Uh, we have, you know, basically the, the basic um, uh, categories of beef grading in the U.S. are select, choice, prime, and uh, this is considered, uh, Wagyu beef is considered to be prime plus plus, so it's way above uh, prime that you would buy uh, that's been raised in the U.S. that is uh, in, a, in a butcher store, for example. Now, let's talk about Japanese Wagyu in Japan, all right? Now, we're going to talk about Japanese Wagyu in Japan, Japanese Wagyu in the U.S., and U.S. or U.S. Wagyu as well. Now, in Japan, beef is served in much smaller portions than we serve it here in the United States. Uh, it is usually never the entire mm, protein part of the meal. It is usually uh, a one of a, a supporting characters in a meal, and now it may be a very important one but it's usually uh, not alone, okay? And it's much smaller. Now here, we might, you might get a 10, 12, 16 ounce steak. Very rare in Japan, unless maybe you're going to a restaurant that's trying to emulate the US Steakhouse, which is not very common and also very, very expensive. So in a Japanese uh, restaurant where you're getting beef, it's often a teppanyaki restaurant. We know them here as like Benihana, but it's very different in Japan. It's much, elegant, much more elegant, much more expensive. And you'll get uh, somewhere between two and four ounces of high quality Wagyu uh, beef. And when I say high quality, I mean there, I'm talking more about the cut. It could be from the ribeye, it could be New York strip, it could be sirloin. And uh, as I said, uh, when eating beef in Japan, it's usually in a much more, uh, comparing say to Benihana in the United States, it's much more elegant, it's much slower, it is much more expensive, and it is worth every penny. The Wagyu beef that you get in Japan will melt in your mouth, and you can cut it with a fork. However, you wouldn't be cutting it with a fork because you will be eating almost always with chopsticks and the pieces are already cut for you usually and uh, they're chopstick size. For example, in a, um, a teppanyaki restaurant, they'll bring out a piece of beef that's really not a whole lot different in size than this slide changer and they'll cook that for you uh, whole on the teppanyaki grill and then they'll slice it for you, present it to you, and then you can eat it with a couple of sauces and some uh, sea salt and some uh, uh, spice mixture. And I'll be showing you that later too on what we're, what we're doing tonight. Now, let's talk about Japanese, Japanese Wagyu in the United States. It's not the same as Japan. It's not the same as Japan. To me, it seems greasier. It is not, I don't think it's as flavorful and it doesn't have the same appearance. It doesn't look as good as the Japanese Wagyu beef that you would see in Japan. Now this may be that the Japanese keep the best stuff for the domestic market. You know, production is relatively small. They don't produce nearly as much beef in Japan as we produce in the United States. So it could be that uh, they keep the best stuff, they ship stuff to the US. But if you remember that chart I showed you, and I'm gonna show it to you again, this chart, 
under A5, there are, um, uh, in the BMS scale, there's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all considered to be A5. My bet, and I don't really know, my bet is that the best A5 in the, say, 10, 11, 12 category, I'll bet that is mostly sold in Japan and that they may export the um, A5 that's in the BMS 8, 9, or maybe 10 category. I don't really know that. It's just a suspicion because when I've been in Japan, I've been there many times, uh, the Wahyu beef there just looks different. Uh, it's just different from what we get in the U.S. Now, let's talk about non-Japanese Wagyu, and there's a lot of it, okay? First of all, all Kobe comes from Kobe. If you're in a restaurant and you see Kobe beef on the menu, ask them, did this really come from Kobe, Japan? They're probably going to say no. Uh, now, uh, that was more of a problem about 10 or maybe, mm, maybe 15 years ago. I often see Kobe on a menu and I'd ask that, is it from Kobe, Japan? They, so they say, no, it's not. Less of a problem now. Now you'll see Wagyu on the menu, and if you see Kobe, it's going to be, first of all, in a very fine restaurant, and it's going to be very expensive. And if you ask them if it's from Kobe, it should be from Kobe. But there's also Wagyu grown worldwide, right? So let's talk about U.S. Wagyu in the U.S. Now we're not talking about Japanese beef anymore. We're talking about U.S. beef, okay? And I have to say, I like it more than Japanese beef in the US. I prefer Japanese beef in Japan overall, but if I'm gonna have beef in the US, I would rather have US grown Wagyu than Japanese grown Wagyu. It has, a, I believe, a better balance of fat and protein. Now you still wanna get good marbling, but uh, you want the marbling, to, first of all, to be attractive. And I think the, the uh, Wagyu beef that's sold in the US looks better than the Japanese beef sold in the US. I think it's less greasy. I think uh, the fat itself, which is intended to be eaten, uh, it kind of melts when you cook it, but some of it's still there. That, I believe, the fat is more flavorful. So overall, I like US Wagyu in the US better than I like Japanese Wagyu in the US. Sorry. Okay, now I wanna talk about tonight's Wagyu, the Wagyu that I'm going to make for guests tonight. This is a piece of Mishima New York strip. I'm gonna hold it close to the camera so you can see the marbling. It's beautifully marbled, but it's a nice mix between the uh, red protein, the meat, and uh, the marbling of the fat. Now, this Mishima uh, is from a full-blooded line of Wagyu Mishima cattle. They were raised in the United States uh, and these particular Wagyu cows were imported into the United States before the importation of those cows was banned. Uh, this particular Mishima is raised on a ranch in Texas, and I got it at a shop in Santa Fe, New Mexico called Beck and Bulo, uh, and they ship. Uh, Beckandbulo.com, I believe it is. B-E-C-K ampersand B-U-L-O-W. I personally think this is the best beef I've had in the United States. Uh, I've had beef in Japan that's as good or better. Uh, I've had Kobe beef uh, in the United States, meaning uh, from Kobe, Japan. I've had Japanese beef from other parts of Japan in the United States. I don't think they're as good as um, this Mishima. This is as good as it gets in the United States. All right, now we're gonna slice the beef and uh, that New York strip that I showed you was about one pound. We're serving four people, so it's going to be four ounces per person. That's plenty for Wagyu beef. Uh, in fact, um, in Japan, you might get two to four ounces at the most. This piece here is about four ounces. And uh, we're going to slice it thinly. And I personally believe this is the only way to eat it. You want to slice it thinly, and then you want to cook it very briefly. And ideally, each guest gets to cook their own, all right? So we're cooking this, I mean, the slicing this to be about, um, I'd say about an eighth of an inch thick, right? That's gonna give you a bunch of slices. And when you are eating it, when you're cooking them yourself and then you're eating it, uh, it's gonna seem like a lot more than it is, okay? Uh, also, slicing the beef is the way it would almost almost certainly be served 
in Japan. Uh, it's very unusual, unless you're in a restaurant that's trying to emulate a U.S. steakhouse, which are pretty rare uh, and really, really expensive. Um, unless you're in a restaurant like that, uh, this type of beef would almost always be served sliced thinly, and either you would cook it yourself, as in a Yakiniku restaurant, or if you're in a teppanyaki restaurant, the teppanyaki chef would probably cook it for you. And appropriately, I'm using my... Uh, Japanese knife tonight, my uh, sujihiki. All right, uh, and also I should mention that this beef is very expensive. It's much more expensive than U.S. Prime, okay? But it's worth every penny for a very special occasion. And here's our beef ready to cook. And uh, these are all in uh, what I would call chopstick sized pieces. That's the way that it would normally be served in Japan. You would uh, cook these pieces individually uh, by laying them on a, a, a grill of some type that the restaurant provides and then you and you do that with your chopsticks and then you pick them up take them dip them in a sauce and uh, so they're chopstick size you wouldn't be using a knife and fork All right now to cook the wagyu tonight um, you can do it in, in different ways uh, there are all different kinds of um, things out there that you can use to do this this is a cone row I use this in uh, my Yakuniku lesson. I have a different size conro, a bigger one that I used in uh, a different lesson. And you use this with the uh, binchotan charcoal, which is basically a smokeless charcoal. Uh, however, uh, you need to have really one of these for either every person or uh, every two people. So what I'm going to use tonight instead is this um, smokeless uh, grill. Uh, you uh, take this. Uh, heating element, you plug it into the side, you plug it in, you turn on the heat, and uh, then you put, uh, I think it's about a half a cup of water down into the, into the bottom here, and it heats up, it's uh, non-stick, and uh, several guests can all access it, like if you put it in the middle of a round table, uh, or if they're sitting around the corner of a table, they can all access it. Uh, so we're going to use this tonight to cook the, um, the uh, Wagyu Mishima beef. Here's our setup for our Mishima beef tonight, which we're doing Yakiniku style. Each guest will have a setup like this. Of course, we have our our beef, our um, Wagyu. We have some scallions and assorted mushroom shiitake and some others, and some sugar snap peas. They've all been lightly tossed in uh, olive oil, salt, and pepper. We also have some ashimi togarashi here and some flaked sea salt. On a Japanese plate, you always have, or a table, you always have a separate dish for eating so that when you cook the piece of uh, whatever the food is, you cook it, you return it to this eating plate. Uh, and um, then we have sauces. So we have one sauce is called gyu demi. There's that word gyu again, it means beef, right? And this is a sauce that I have in my Sauce to Die For series. Gyu demi is a mixture of uh, gyu dare and uh, demi glace, right? And um, then we also have uh, gyu dare, and gyu dare is, I have a separate lesson on that. It's basically, it's a, the basic beef dipping sauce for making yakiniku and other dishes. All right, so now we are ready to, oh, and of course we also have sake. And uh, the sake that I'm pouring tonight is amayo, oh, amayo, Sukasa Black, Junmai. So Junmai means it's made with only rice water and koji. And um, it's a very nice um, dry sake. I think will go great with this food. I hope this video helps you to understand Wagyu beef. You can see photos of the uh, presentation that I made of Wagyu beef on my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, Cook Like a Pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.